During the winter here, many people leave their cars with the engine running all the time, even at night, since it would only take 20 minutes for everything to freeze. <laughs> That's crazy! We are talking about a place where the lowest temperature ever recorded was minus 63 degrees Celsius. This episode of Earth Records is centered on Yakutsk, a Russian city known as the coldest city in the world. Just to give you an idea, in Italy the lowest temperature I'm talking about Italy because I'm Italian, Geopop is an Italian project. Here in Italy, the lowest temperatures are generally reached in Aosta, in the northern part of the Italy, where the temperature drops between minus 7 and minus 11 degree. I mean, here the lowest temperature ever was reached in 2010 and it was minus 18.9 degrees Celsius. Being in Yakutsk during the winter is like living in a super freezer at maximum power. And I mean really maximum power, because in order to give you an idea, our freezers at our home, actually they work about minus 18 degrees, while their temperatures reach minus 50 or even minus 60 degrees. But how can it be so cold there? Yes, we are almost at the North Pole. I said almost because we are at 62 degrees latitude. So the climate certainly won't be mild around there. However, for such freezing temperature to be reached, atmospheric, physical and geographical factors must come into play. Yakutsk is located in Russia, in the Republic of Yakutia or Saka in eastern Siberia. The city is built on the permafrost, the permanently frozen ground which is found in the coldest areas of the planet, such as Siberia. Since it's located many kilometers away from the coast, it has a continental climate, which is generally subject to extreme temperatures. In fact, inland areas heat up and cool down at a much faster rate than coastal ones. Besides, at those latitudes, the angle of the incidence of the sun rays is so high that clearly the extent of ground warming is minimal. The geographical location of Yakutsk and the Siberian anticyclone also contribute to its coldness. In general, anticyclones are atmospheric zones of high pressure, where the air is heavier and the climate changes very slowly. The Siberian anticyclone originates from the vigorous cooling of these regions and is characterized by a lack of humidity. The high density of the air also interacts with the geographical territory surrounding Yakutsk. In fact, the city is at the bottom of the valley, surrounded by mountains. This means that once the cold air arrives, as it is dense and heavy, it practically remains trapped there, as if in a sort of enclosure. So the morphology also plays its part in making things worse. In order to survive in Yakutsk, you have to dress with three or four layers of clothing at least. It probably takes three hours in order to get dressed. However, the people in Yakutsk don't seem to pay much attention to the cold and leave normal lives. Actually, when they go to the open-air market, meat and fish are so frozen that in order to be sold, they have to be cut with a chainsaw. Ha! Chainsaw! Oh my god! But the most absurd thing is that Yakutsk is not a small village with a few brave people unafraid of the cold. Quite something else! It has 320,000 inhabitants, slightly fewer than Bologna or Florence. If you didn't come to Italy yet, well, Florence is magic, uh, Naples is magic, Rome is incredible, Venice, Bologna, the seas, you should come. 
let's back to the video well actually it's a lively expanding city with museum amusement parks and a university well if i won't be really really accurate there is actually a, another inhabited area where the temperature are even lower in fact in the siberian town of oimiakon the temperature dropped below minus 70 degrees but but we are talking about a village with few hundred inhabitants nothing to compare with the numbers of Yakutsk that is a real city so we said that Yakutsk is built on permafrost but how does a city of 122 square kilometers manage to stay on top of a huge frozen expanse without collapsing there is a gap of approximately one and a half meters between the buildings in Yakutsk and the frozen ground because if they were in contact they would heat up the surface layer potentially leading to thawing these buildings are supported by stilts that are driven down to a depth of around 10 meters so it is necessary to go down past the superficial layer of permafrost which melts at lower temperature and reach the deeper layer which has been partially frozen since the last ice age which was at its peak around 18,000 years ago if you want a technical video on the last ice age i mean technical from the geological point of view please write down here in the comments last ice age and we'll do the video for the same reason water pipes heating pipes and electrical cables are above the ground otherwise they would freeze in fact the infrastructure is clearly visible in the city they are often wrapped in insulating materials because the open air obviously is not warm even with these precautions it is not 100 percent sure that one can feel safe in fact a large number of buildings in yakutsk have slanted walls or floors because the ground is in a never-ending state of motion but yakutsk is at risk of losing its record because of the effects of global warming it's true that it doesn't freeze during all the year around there thanks to the continental climate the thermal excursion between the season is impressive and during the summer the maximum temperatures can even reach 20 or 25 degrees celsius however recently uh, there have been some abnormal temperature peaks between 35 and 38 degrees celsius this makes it more and more dangerous to construct on permafrost which could even melt until the depth i don't know if you remember the, the last siberian fires in august last year it was an environmental catastrophe that took place in yakutsia the region in which yakutsk is located and uh, fires not only destroyed forests but also contribute to the melting of the permafrost in fact the potential release of the methane contained in the permafrost in the soil could increase the greenhouse effect however this is another topic that we can discuss furthermore if you want us to do that let us know in the comment section zero i hope you enjoyed this video from our earth record series i hope that my english is not the worst english ever i'm italian you can you can hear that i'm italian if you have other ideas for this series please let us know with a comment and see you in the next video always here on Japop everyday science ciao